So have you been searching all over YouTube and the internet looking for how to do a simple two to four person live streaming setup? Maybe you wanna use your web camera, maybe you wanna use a camera like this, but just finding like either a setups that are too complex or stuff that just like is still not hitting it. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about just some basic equipment that you can use to do a live streaming setup to up to four people and not pull your hair out. We're gonna be talking about it coming up next. Hey, what's up guys, Dana here with Untrade Woman TV, helping you move your vision forward using video. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to get a two to four person live streaming setup using your Canon M50 or maybe you have a web camera. And so I just noticed like when I wanted to figure this out, there really wasn't a simple way to do it or just like a simple video. When I've done a podcast with my friends and it's three of us, and that's it's the same setup that I use for this, for the live streaming setup that we just did for two people. So it's really simple, really easy to use. Also, if you are using a PC, we'll break this video down into two parts, the what you need in the first part from the video, the audio, and then some accessories to maybe swap out to have a little bit of a better uh, and simpler setup. When we get into the how-to, I'm specifically gonna be talking about how to do this with a Mac because that is what I use in the computer that I have, but otherwise, let's get to it. Okay, so the first part is going to be video. Whether you're using a camera like the Canon M50, really amazing camera, and I really love how small it is and compact it is when it comes to doing video, just in general. But when it comes to live streaming, if you have a software like Ecamm Live that I absolutely love to use, and one of the reasons I switched to Mac in the first place, it's gonna make using something like this Canon M50 or really any Canon camera, modern Canon camera, work really well, whether it's mirrorless or DSLR. But you don't have to have one of these. This is just kind of like optional. But if you do, I've done two specific videos one for Mac users, one for PC users, or if you have some other kind of camera. Uh, if you're using Ecamm Live and you have a Mac, because that's a Mac only program, unfortunately, then you can use your Canon camera and just have a USB cord. If you have some other kind of camera, maybe you're using a Sony camera or whatever, then you may want to consider using something like this Elgato Cam Link. That's it as far as the video uh, setup for that. Links to everything I'll be talking about will be linked down in a kit down below and any helpful videos will be linked up there so we don't have to keep saying that. So <laughs> that's what you need as far as the video is concerned. If you want a USB camera and that's what you have, something like the Logitech C920 has done me very well for the past three years. Just make sure you have some good lighting, two softbox lights like I'm using right now, and you're pretty much good to go. So let's get to the audio part. All right, so when it comes to audio, what I'm actually going to be using is an audio interface. I am not going to be using any, uh, like a Zoom H6N or H6, I think it's called. I'm going to be specifically using one thing. Uh, so if you're wanting to do it with recorders, maybe a different video for you. But as far as the audio interface, I like it, it's super easy, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Right now, I wanna to touch on the microphones. Not literally, but we'll talk about it. So <laughs> when it comes to the microphones, I prefer, personally, dynamic microphones, which means it's basically like those handheld microphones that you'll see at church or anywhere else, a concert or whomever. And the reason why is because even though there are other microphone out options out there, like a Blue Yeti and the Snowball and all this extra other stuff, they're fine and they can adjust the pickup pattern so that it picks up a bunch of people or just, you know, yourself. This just keeps it really simple. And these are USB and XLR microphones. So on the bottom, they have this traditional port that you can use for everything literally audio related, but it also is simple enough that you can just connect it via USB and plug it into your computer. Now, if it's just you, that's literally, literally all you need. And like I said, I did a video about that before. I'll link that up above. But when you're talking about more than one person, uh, a computer, it's only going to take one USB audio source. If you try to do two, however you hook it up or connect it up, it's not really going to read it right and it's going to make it really jumbled and it's, it's a mess. What makes this work the best is this little gem right here, which is the Behringer 404HD. Now there are a ton of options out there. Like I said, this is an audio interface. Uh, it's not a recorder, so it's you can't just like have it recording for you and then you know deal with the audio later. Um, this is just basically going to make it so that you can take these XLR ports that go with these cables like this and you can plug the microphone straight into here. And then on the back, you have like a USB connector and plug that into your computer. And that's pretty much it. However, the thing that sets this one apart for me, one is the size. I've tried mixing boards and playing around with that. And they even have some fun sound effects on there, but 
Okay, so I think I got this hooked in right. Now this here is the uh, pitch changer. Now if you're in a good mood, you can make it all up high like this. But when you really get upset, you just turn it on down. And oh boy, when you turn it on down, turn it on down. I mean, so I mean, I have fun, you know, playing with that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a lot. You got these big boards, all these dials simple that's my goal simple this is very simple but it has enough stuff on it and on the back that it can be more complex or you can take it to church and you know if your pastors are doing a podcast or a live video live stream then this will work for you um, and your audio people will know what to do with all these extra connections as far as our purposes I'm gonna plug into the XLR and we can adjust the audio levels for everybody so every so no one person is really distorted or what if they laugh or something like that um, what makes this a gem versus any of the other ones because it's relatively cheap comparative to other stuff that you can use or buy for audio is like gets to be pretty pricey so for 100 i think like 130 dollars but there are ones out there where it's just like two i think it's like the 202 hd and it's just two of these things versus four of them and that's what sets this one apart for me so that's really what makes this whole setup work is this right here so if you didn't want to know anything else, you can stop right there and just get one of these and you're good to go. There's one additional piece that I would add onto this, depending if you want to, this is really, really optional. And this is a headphone adapter, adapter. Why did you say adapter? This is a headphone adapter. <laughs> and basically um, there is only one place on this uh, interface here where you can listen to the audio and you can adjust the headphone volumes and all of that. And you'll need to take one of these kind of adapters. You'll see them like on the ends of a guitar or whatever and make it so that it turns into a head, regular headphone jack. If you are going to be the only one monitoring the audio, like it's usually me, then that's fine because you can adjust everybody's level. But if everybody wants to hear themselves and you do have four people, this lets everybody adjust their own headphone volume so that they can hear themselves if they wanted to. And that's pretty much all there is for that setup. So let's get into the accessories. Okay, so I touched on microphone stands and just, you know, how you'll get this one in the box. Maybe you should get something else. There's one other piece to that. Um, this is basically going to be the microphone clamp. There's nothing wrong with something like this. This will get you by until you are wanting to or willing to invest in more. Um, but even though you get this particular stand, I would say switch out this top piece that's holding the microphone. And the reason being is because if you have a table that's, you know, pretty noisy like this one is, or you can hear that being uh, slid around on the desk, something like this here, this scissor arm that just clamps to the desk, and you can use it, these, these run you about 12 bucks. That's an option if you have the space, otherwise these work just fine. The point about it though is this top piece here that comes with, it's a whole kit that comes with this actual windscreen so the plosive, the T's and the P's don't come through and punch somebody in the ear through the headphones that's listening, but it suspends the audio or the microphone in this kind of like rubber band little holder so that when somebody moves it around, you're not hearing the microphone uh, kind of get jostled around and stuff like that. So that can sound weird in, in the audio. If you're on a live stream, it's a little bit more forgiving on a live stream if you're trying to do something like a podcast. Um, you kind of want to have it as nice as possible, but that's just another option I would recommend and something that I invested in as well. The other part of that is when you get these microphones, something like either one of these, they will come with a cable, especially the Audio Technica, It'll come with a cable and these are fine to start with and it's nice to have extra XLR cables. Uh, but one of the things that I found is like when it comes to audio, it's really, really weird. You can have like where depending on the power source or where stuff is plugged up or what cords are touching or how close it is to a computer, like it's picking up these buzzing uh, noises and grounding issues, all this extra other stuff that becomes a headache. The best thing to do I found is invest in a better shielded cable, meaning that the cable is better protected from some of those noises. You still may, depending on, you know, when you do a test run, if you hear something, you probably wanna Google it, figure out what, what's going on or what that sound is coming from. Uh, but this will help to knock out a lot of those noises versus the one that just kind of comes in the box. It's the same kind of XLR cable, just thicker, shielded better, so it rejects uh, some of those same problems that you might have from a cheaper cable. Again, it's optional, depending on where you are or what kind of stuff you're experiencing. You may not even need it, 
but I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So that's that, but let's get over to how you connect this stuff together. And I'm just gonna do, again, with a simple setup uh, for with the one microphone and you just add on more as you need more, but let's do that. Okay, so for this setup, I'm just gonna do kind of like a rough setup and I'll show you an example of the quality that you can get from this. Um, you do wanna make sure, just quick tip, uh, depending on what software programs that you're using or whatever, uh, I've noticed like Facebook has like a delay or whatever, so the clip you see there may be a slight delay if I can't get it adjusted in uh, post-production when I'm editing it. But otherwise, it's like you shouldn't have too many problems. I never had an issue like with YouTube, but as far as Facebook, there always seems to be a slight delay no matter whose computer or setup it is or how you know expensive of a setup that they have. So that's just a quick tip there. Um, so let's just do a dry run through of how you set this up. Basically, uh, at the end of this microphone, this uh, female or receiving end here basically plugs to the end of the microphone and you do want to make sure those are on. Uh, even though it's connected via XLR, you just want to make sure those are connected there. <clears throat> For this particular unit, you do not need any of these buttons pushed. Uh, this is only if you're going to use some other type of connectivity. We don't need that for this one. So first microphone, go into the first unit and that connects in. That's pretty much all there is. And let that person talk, laugh, get them to make noise uh, so that you can adjust their audio levels for that. Now that's the front half of that. And you just continue to connect depending on how many microphones that you have. The only other thing that we need is this data connectivity USB type cable. Uh, and one looks like a printer cable and then the other one is just a regular USB. And so on the back of this particular unit, you're going to have where it says USB on there specifically. And you just plug this in there and then plug the other half into your computer. And we'll do that part in just a minute and I'll show you what that looks like on the back. So that's really all there is as far as that setup. Make sure you adjust your cables and all that good stuff when it comes to the computer and your camera and how you're going to connect those. Like I said, you can use that Elgato cam link. This is all I need for a Canon camera, Ecamm Live, and just a USB cable and basically plug it into the camera, into the laptop. All right, so if you are on your Mac and you go over to your audio, area you should be able to pick it from here for the output but i like to go to sound preferences and pull up this specific box here now what this will do is let me select the output and the input the output lets me either decide do i want to use the headphone jack on the computer i prefer to use it on the behringer 404 hd i can get the audio exactly as it's coming through the microphone so i'll choose that there and then for the input then i'll choose that i want the audio going into the computer to be that as well once we are uh, have that selected, that's pretty much it. You can adjust the volume levels there. I'm not too concerned about this because I'm adjusting everything on the actual device. Now, if we go over to Ecamm Live, this is just using the web camera here. Then I'll pull up my sound levels, which I have mine set to auto come up. And then you can have like all your settings and stuff up here. Maybe I'll do a dedicated video on Ecamm Live. But uh, you wanna go over here and select the 404 HD and that will adjust the audio levels. And so this makes sure it doesn't peak. Even if I talk really loud, then I can decide what is gonna be what, and then you can adjust your cameras, uh, depending on what you have connected and stuff like that, and get a look like this. Girl, you gonna messing up again, see mm -hmm. girl, mm -hmm. you gonna picking up an extra cupcake or something. No! <laughs> <laughs> you I'm know, you, know you, you got struggles, you got struggles. <laughs> okay. Sis, I'm struggling. <laughs> but you know, that's how I remind myself, the Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to, you know, just beat myself up about the things that I'm falling short or, or my past. So other than deciding what camera that you're gonna use, whether it's the web camera on your computer, the one that you buy, like the Logitech C920, or one like this Canon M50 right here to make sure you can kind of get a quality sim similar to this or what I've shown you uh, that me and my friend recently did, it really doesn't take a whole lot to get a, a very simple setup. And even on a small desk like this, you can you know get stuff organized and finagle it or get a little stool and set stuff off to the side and have a really clean setup. But if you guys have any questions, basic questions you can let me know down in the description down below again i don't try to get super technical with this stuff i just want stuff that works